Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to talk about poop. Yes, that's right. You can just quit giggling. We're all adults here. First, let me say good morning. I am semi-retired Bob. I talk about the carnivore diet and all things related to the carnivore diet, plus a few odds and ends here and there. Welcome to all the new subscribers, and if this is your first time here, go ahead and hit subscribe. It's free. It doesn't cost you a thing. And go ahead and hit the little bell notification. But I want to thank everybody for being here. Stick around to the end of the video. I've got a couple of big milestone announcements. And, you know, if you don't like the, the part of the video where I speed up the, the walking and insert music, just skip past it. You don't want to miss the end of this. And as I put in a little text, what I thingy on the screen yesterday, what I've decided to do with that sped up section. Um, in the future, once I get up to, oh, well, that sounded really healthy. Once I get up to the point where I can take my big camera out with me and actually take some pictures along these hikes, instead of doing the sped up section, I'll probably insert a few pictures that I've taken into there. I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do that, but I'll figure something out. But anyway, oh, Allison, thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. So let's talk about poop. What is it? Well, it's the waste. It's what our body can't use. And that's why when we eat a lot of fiber and undigestible plant matter, we used to get, you know, what they call these great big healthy poops. Somebody count how many times I say poop in this episode. I know. Some of us are giggling inside because, let's face it, no matter how old guys get, we always, always laugh at poop and fart jokes. We just do. Girls, not so much. Guys, we do. And that's why, you know, they claim that All that fiber and vegetable matter is good for you because you have big healthy poops. But all that really means is that you put a bunch of stuff in your body that your body can't use. So it goes out the other end. I did a little better today. I'm almost up to my turn up that first big hill and I managed to talk through most of it. But uh, I may be walking a little faster today because it's 44 degrees outside this morning. That's about seven degrees Celsius for those of you in the rest of the world. So as you can see, I got my jacket on, so you can't quite see the whole shirt. It's a gone fishing shirt, and it says, sometimes it's better to beg forgiveness than ask permission. And that's a really good rule to live your life by. But... One of the big things that you've never heard about your poop on carnivore diet 
you know everybody talks about the transition phase where you have loose stools to the explosive kind of loose where you the first couple of weeks you can't you know get too far away from the bathroom and that happened to me but I'm going to tell you more about what happened to me and kind of tie it all together you know I I expected that to happen because I did not transition I jumped in with both feet I ate standard American diet on May the 8th and on May the 9th I just went carnivore and the result was pretty predictable about three and a half four hours after that first big meal there was an explosion and after about the first three days I was seriously considering putting a seat belt on my toilet to keep me from getting blown off no it wasn't really that bad but it was it was bad but everybody had said this only lasts for a couple of weeks so just hang in there so I, I hung in there and in fairness to everybody that says about two weeks or maybe a little more I did it got to the point where I could control it after that amount of time but it kept on going it was four weeks and my stools were still really loose and then it was six weeks and my stools were still really loose and in communicating with my doctor he said as long as there's no odd coloring you should still be okay but then of course he always said what you really ought to do is go back to eating your diabetes diet because that'll clear it right up well, I didn't want to do that and I was losing weight I mean you've seen the videos I lost a ton of weight and I was feeling better that was the biggest thing that kept me going you know I originally started this because I wanted to be able to stand for more than two and a half minutes at a time and now I'm out here walking every day now I'm here to tell you that I had loose stools for almost the first three months and then I found something out and it happened to coincide with one of the big events in my life this isn't one of the big events I'm going to talk about at the end of the video the event where my uh, A1C came back as 4.8 and I threw the metformin away because I didn't need it anymore and if I had seen or heard Dr. Barry talk I think it was in one of his uh, live chats that somebody asked the question is it possible metformin could be causing my loose stools? And Dr. Barry's answer surprised me. He said, not normally, but yes, in a small percentage of people, one of the side effects of metformin is loose stools. 
and I wasn't just taking the standard starter dose of 500 twice a day. I was taking a thousand twice a day. And wouldn't you know, I got rid of the metformin and within a day, let's just say things solidified. What a relief to know that there wasn't actually something wrong with me and that I was going to have to change my diet. It was one of the drugs that the pharmaceutical companies love you to buy that was causing all the problems. If I'd known that, I probably would have stopped the metformin a little sooner and lived with just a little bit higher A1C because I still believe it would have been normal. But now that brings us to another one of the questions that we hear so often. I hope this camera's getting enough light on me because it's really cloudy out this morning. And my hands are getting cold. I should have brought gloves. But anyway, I hear the question asked on Dr. Barry's lives almost every live. I see the question in multiple groups, you know, because I belong to Carnivore Quest group on Facebook and several other low-carb groups and carnivore groups. You know, I try to stay as active as I can in the community, but there are only so many hours in the day But everybody's always asking about, well, now I'm constipated. I haven't pooped in two or three or four days. Well, let's go back to the beginning. What is poop? It's waste. It's things your body can't use and it just goes out the other end. When you're eating a carnivore diet, there's very little that your body can't use. You know, there are some people that say you can only use so much protein at any given time and there's some people that say you can only use so much fat at any given one time. And I do believe that people that are eating too much fat, that will also cause some loose stool. But for the most part, you're just not creating any waste because your body's using everything you're putting into it. So unless you're really straining and it's hard and causing you pain, That could be constipation. And you can try adding a little more fat to your diet or a little more magnesium to your diet. And Dr. Barry's got a video on magnesium rich foods. So I'm not gonna get into that. You can just go watch that and figure out how to get more magnesium in your diet. But, uh, If you're not having any of those symptoms, it's not that you're constipated. You just don't have enough waste buildup to trigger your urges to go sit on the toilet. And I had a completely different topic in mind today, and I was kind of cobbling it together. And it was this morning, 
as I was getting ready to go take my morning shower and sitting on the throne of thought it came to me that today is October the 7th and today is also the first time I've sat on the throne of thought since the start of the Lion Diet October No Coffee Challenge. So that's been a week. And I can assure you there's nothing wrong down there. It, uh, so I got to thinking about it and then realized, you know, thought over all the questions I'd seen in all the various different places and thought, well, this, this is something, while it's probably a subject some of you don't really want to talk about, it's something that needs to be said in this space. And, uh, If you need to, to know more about your poop, Dr. Barry, just a couple, three weeks ago, put out a video about the color of your poop. So if you're having some strangeness there, you should probably go watch that video and decide if you need to go see your doctor or not. But relax. If you're just getting started, and I'm sure many people watching this are trying to reduce or cure their type 2 diabetes, you could be one of those people that metformin is causing this issue. Just relax. It won't take that long. It took me about three and a half to four months to completely reverse my diabetes. And you can do it too. Just hang in there, endure the, the little problems. And again, I want to reiterate, the explosiveness only lasted a couple of weeks. After that, I could control it to the point where I would feel Oh, we're, and we're going out and around into the street today because here's another house. Moving on into October, and they still got their sprinklers going because they want to try and keep their grass green, not realizing how much that stalls it coming back in the spring. And now they've got the street flooded over here a little bit. So my left foot's probably going to get a little wet. Because there's a hole in my left shoe. These shoes that I wear for walking are really old. But they're very comfortable. But there's a hole in the left sole from where I used to work the clutch in my truck. Don't worry, I'm getting new shoes next week when I visit that close relative that runs the running store. I called her and she's going to hook me up with a really good pair of walking shoes. So I'm looking forward to that. But don't despair, diabetics. You could be one of those people that metformin just does that to you. So... Hang in there. I, I assure you it will get better. And now, I'm at the base of that big hill that leads up to the top, top of my street. 
this is the part where if you don't like the fast walking go ahead and skip forward where that stops because I got some big announcements to make or if you like the music go ahead and cue the music Okay, cut the music. Thank you. I just got turned around, headed back down towards the house. I did that extra I did yesterday. Plus I went down one of the side streets for a little bit. I measured it out with the truck. And this is one of those big announcements. If I did my math correctly and didn't make any mistakes in the truck, today is the day I'm going to cross the two mile mark on my walk. I'll let you know for sure at the end where I normally mark these, but just under five months ago, I could barely stand up for more than two minutes without severe pain. And today I flipped that two into, I walked continuously for two miles. The timer on the video says 36 something and I still have a little ways to go so probably gonna end up being not quite a 20 minute per mile pace but that's fairly good for an old guy that couldn't stand up for more than two, two and a half minutes at a time without pain. But the really important thing to remember about the original subject, if at any time you have actual pain, I'm not talking about the gut rumbles or the gassy, bloated pressure kind of pain. But if you have real physical pain, you need to go to the emergency room or your doctor right away and get checked out. It's probably not gonna happen. There may be a few, 
but just in case that happens to you, don't forget to go see your doctor. And while I'm walking down the hill here, getting ready for my other big announcement, don't forget to do all the YouTube-y things. If you like what I'm doing here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. There's a little bell next to it. Click on that bell and select all so that you get a notification every time I upload a video. Click the like button. Share it out with your friends. Because the more you share the video, the more we get the word out. And some of my regulars will have figured out what this last big announcement is. Because they've been following my journey for a while. And they know, more, they know where my weight has been. But I'll give you a little, a little sneak preview of Sunday. Because Sunday will be the exact five month mark for me. And the title of Sunday's video is going to be How I Lost 100 Pounds in Five Months. This morning, the scale dipped down and I have lost 100 pounds. I'm pretty excited about that. That might be why I'm walking so good today. But I feel really good without the coffee. I don't know if it's better or worse. I haven't had itchy ears for the last couple nights, so I think it might have been either something in the coffee or the caffeine itself making my ears itchy. I don't know. We'll see. Should be a pop-up over here to click on the September challenge. And over here should be a video that you haven't seen before. Thanks for sticking around to the end, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.